welcome to The Big Bang. In today's show, we're going to be taking a close-up look at just about everything. We're going to be making beautiful crystals and slicing up rock. And we're going to be doing something really interesting with 200 mouse traps and about the same number of ping-pong balls. What? They're a present for you from your Uncle Bloodwin. Well, what are we going to do with them? I don't know yet, but keep thinking. I'm sure we'll think of something by the end of the programme. But first, a trick. Tea strainers are very good at straining tea because they let the tea through, but they keep all the tea leaves behind. But I can make a tea strainer hold water without blocking up the holes. Uh, you can make a tea strainer hold water? I can. Just watch this. There it is. Look oh, at that. But how did I know you haven't cheated and blocked up the holes? Watch this. Thank you. That is clever. The way it works is also very clever. If I pour the water quickly, it goes straight through the tea strainer. <coughs> but if I pour the water slowly, it stays in the strainer. And it's actually the water holding itself in. You see, water is covered with an incredibly thin skin. But that skin can be quite strong if it's stretched over small holes. And a tea strainer is full of tiny holes. But when I tap the tea strainer, that skin is broken and the water pours out. Oh, that's really good. Now, would you like some sugar with your tea, Gareth? Yes, thank you, Kate. Kate, there's sand in this sugar. Yeah, I know. It's my trick. What, poisoning me with sand? No, no. The trick is to separate the sugar from the sand. And I'll be showing you a clever way of doing that at the end of the programme. Gareth, what are you doing? I'm gardening, my dear. <laughs> With a crystal garden? That should suit you. No weeds. Yeah, do you like it? I thought I'd try and make it look like a, a Japanese rock garden. It's lovely. Uh, how do you make it, then? Well, come over here and I'll show you how you make these wonderful, huge crystals. You'll need a bit of loving care, a bit of patience, and this stuff. Alum, which you can get from the chemist. Now, you're going to actually make this into a solution. So you'll need a jar full of hot water. Mm. OK, can you pour in some alum into that jar for me, please? How much? Well, just keep going as much as you possibly can. And if you stir it, you maximise the amount of alum that you can get in. And you know when the solution is completely saturated, because you can see some crystals left at the bottom, which just won't dissolve. The next stage is to leave that to cool overnight and you should get something that looks like this. Now Kate, can you pour off the solution and separate the crystals onto this saucer for me? Now, we're going to choose one of these crystals and grow a big one from it. It's kind of like a seed growing into a tree. Yep, so pour out the crystals Crystals here. on there, yeah. And uh, pick one of the biggest crystals you can from that lot. There we are. You There's get it? one there, yeah. Excellent. Ah, right now, it's good to try and choose a crystal that's got a fairly regular shape. That means that the big crystal that you'll grow from it will also have a regular shape. Now, Kate, can you tie that bit of cotton around that crystal and mm -hmm. attach it to that pencil? Now, the reason for doing this is that you want to um, attach your 
crystal to a cotton so you can lower it into the solution so it will grow even more and the pencil you could also use a skewer is really good because you can alter the length so it sits perfectly in the middle of your alum solution okay right Kate done that uh-huh now lower it into this jar of the solution that you saved earlier on and then just leave it to grow but as you're growing a little baby you're going to need to feed it and so you feed it with more alum just top up a little bit of alum every day and look at this here's one i've been growing for about a month Topped oh, wow. up every day and actually it's grown so big i had to put it in a bigger container isn't that nice that is really good well that's the big crystal what about those colored crystals that you got they're even easier because that sugar and sugar is already fairly large crystals so all you do is add some colored food dye and uh, if you mix up the different colored sugars dyed with different colors you get this smashing rainbow effect and it's perfectly safe to use in your tea or you could turn it into your beautiful rock garden. You can! Do you like it? I think it's absolutely lovely. I think it's rather nice. Small, but perfectly formed. Today's strange but true story is about a man who needed a microscope to look at mountains. He was wealthy, a kind of grand Victorian gentleman. Gareth, a gentleman. Sorry. But he was also an excellent scientist. His name was Henry Clifton Sorby. Sorby was fascinated by minute detail. As well as being a scientist, he was an enthusiastic painter. And even his paintings were beautifully intricate, made with very fine brush strokes and incredibly detailed. Wherever Sorby went, he always tried to take with him two very valuable pieces of equipment. His telescope and his portable microscope. He had a huge collection of microscope slides. We've got just a few of them here, and this one is really wild. Take a look at that. A ragworm. So that he could give lectures about what he discovered, Sorby developed a technique where he could mount insects and sea creatures on a glass slide and then project them. But what's incredible about these things is that no one has been able to produce slides of this quality since. Sorby's method was so careful and his standards so high that these slides are completely unique. But that's not really what Sorby's best known for. He's really famous for a chip off the old rock. Sorby was a geologist and he loved looking at rocks. Now, when he first started his work, there were two ways of doing it. You could either hit the rock with a hammer so you break it open and you can see the layers inside, or you could take a lump of it and dissolve it in acid. But that was no good to Sorby. Boring. He needed a different way of looking at rock, so he invented a brand new area of scientific study. He decided he wanted to look at his mountains through a microscope. So he stuck a piece of rock onto a microscope slide and got to work. Life became a bit of a daily grind as Sorby ground down the rock thinner and thinner and thinner till eventually it was a wafer thin layer. Once it was cleaned, he could then look at it through a microscope. And this was the hidden world he discovered. Beautiful patterns made by the light shining through the minerals contained in the rock. It became Sorby's life work to find a way of using the colors to identify the different minerals. And his methods are still used to this day. Henry just couldn't get enough of these rock slides. He got his mum and his butler to help him. And between them, they ground down nearly 2,000 rock samples. Some so-called experts had laughed at Sorby when he announced what he was going to do. They said, to study mountains with a microscope is not a proper thing to do at all. Luckily, Sorby continued and eventually became recognised as a founder of a whole new branch of geology, microscopical petrography. And that's the strange but true story of the man who looked at mountains with a microscope. Yes! I've got it! Got what? Come on, Gareth, bring the mouse traps and all the ping pong balls. I know. What? What are we doing, Kate? 
Well, you know about chain reactions? Like dominoes, uh, you knock the first one down and it knocks the next one and then the next one and the next one. Yeah, and that's what happens in a nuclear reactor in a power station too. But if it's not controlled like that, then the reaction goes faster and faster and faster and it ends up like an avalanche or a nuclear bomb. Well, we're going to make that kind of chain reaction. What, like boom? Yeah, boom. With mouse traps. Boom with mouse traps. Thank you, madam. That's handy. Right, welcome to the Big Bang Chain Reaction. What we're going to do is set all 200 mousetraps and then put a ping-pong ball on top of each one. When they're all set, we stand well back and throw in an extra ping-pong ball. When that hits a mousetrap, it'll set it off and fire off its ping-pong ball, so you'll have two bouncing around. Then each of those will hit another mousetrap, so you get four balls, then eight balls, then 16, then 32, and before you know it, ah! all 200 ping-pong balls. It's a ping-pong ball chain reaction. Oh well, start again. One. Finished. Standing by. Standing by. Three. Three. Two. Two. One. One. Go! Oh! <laughs> 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 Big Bang chain reaction with 200 mouse traps and loads of bouncing balls. Gareth, you're out. Right. You can always rely on Uncle Blodwin to come up with an ingenious birthday present. You're going to put the kettle on, Kate? Oh, if you want a cup of tea, you're going to need some sugar. Have you sorted out your sand and sugar trick yet? Well, I've started, but who needs a trick? All you need is a little time and patience and a pair of tweezers, and it's easy <laughs> enough to separate the sugar from the sand. Gareth, you're going to die of thirst before you get a teaspoonful that way. There's a better way of doing it. You need water. Put the mixture into water. Your sugar will dissolve in the water, but your sand doesn't. So all you need to do is pour off the liquid which contains the sugar, leave that in a warm place till the water's evaporated off, and then what you'll be left with is your sugar crystals left behind, separated from your sand. By which time my tea's gone stone cold. Oh, Gareth, you don't need sugar anyway. You're sweet enough already. You little charmer. <laughs> That's it for this Big Bang. In the next programme, we're going to be looking at colour in a whole new light. Did you get those lemon francis? I need a biscuit. It was your turn to do the shopping, Gareth. <laughs>